Howdy y'all, it's Jordan Smith. So you're wanting to soundproof a room. Maybe you're putting in a home theater and you don't want those sounds emitting to the rest of the house. Maybe you live off a busy road and you're trying to reject the noise coming in off the highway. Maybe you're just really creepy and want a soundproof room for personal reasons. Whatever brought you to this video, it'll probably disappoint you and here's why. I'm not going to tell you how to soundproof in this video. I am going to talk to you about what sound is because before you are able to effectively combat sound, you need to understand what sound is. So let's jump right into it. Sound is a vibration. It's a vibration that is carried through air, hits our ears, and our brain interprets it as sound. Because it's a vibration, I can draw it as a wave up here. At the crest of the wave, this is compression. At the trough of the wave, this is rarefraction. So this sound is just vibrations moving through the air. The molecules are squeezing together, compressed together, and then they're getting spread apart, squeezed together, spread apart, and it hits your ears and you hear it. Now we can't hear all of the vibrations in the air, all we can hear is vibrations that happen between 20 times per second and 20,000 times per second. That's called the frequency range of human hearing. That means that between my peak and my peak, if, that, if the peaks are hitting my ears every 20 times per second, I can hear it. And if it's hitting my ears up to 20,000 times per second, I can hear it. Now, in adults, I can no longer hear up to 20 kilohertz. I can only hear up to 18.5 kilohertz. I've got a tone generator that I'm going to be putting a link to below where you can play around and scroll back and forth and see where you can hear. I've lost a little bit off the top range. I imagine you have too. If you've got little kids running around, put the headphones in their ears and I bet you they will be able to hear much higher than what you or I will if you're in your 30s or beyond. So that's the frequency range that we can hear. And then we also hear a certain range of loudness. So we can hear noises between one decibel and 130 decibels. Now a decibel is a logarithmic scale that puts power in a loudness term that we can understand. To give you an idea of how sensitive our hearing is, is this 1 dB, this threshold of hearing for humans, is around 1 billionth of an atmospheric change. So if we're sitting here at atmospheric pressure and there's no vibrations, and then all of a sudden we get a compression of 1 billionth of an atmosphere, we can pick that up. So that's like, you know, a mouse running across the floor or like a leaf hitting the yard. It's incredibly sensitive. Now we can also hear very, very, very powerful noises like up to jet engines screaming off of a runway up to here, this 130, maybe 140 dB. And now your ears are going to be hurting and there's going to be damage happening at those levels, but you can still hear it. To give you an idea of how powerful that is, that is like 10 trillion times more powerful than this 1 dB. Now, it's hard to understand both frequency and decibels because they are both working in a logarithmic scale. What this means is that for frequencies, every time I double my frequencies, I get an octave change that I perceive as a set interval. So between 20 hertz and 40 hertz is one octave. I've doubled my frequency. Between 40 and 80, I hear the same interval change, but my frequencies, instead of just being a 20 hertz change, is now a 40 hertz change. And then 40, 80, 80, 160, and so on and so forth. Each doubling of the frequencies sounds like an octave. So in musical terms, if you're a musician, you play an A at 440, the next one is going to be 880, so you've got, a, you've got a difference of 440 hertz, and then from 880 up to 1760 and so forth. But if you have a keyboard there and you play A and A, and then the next day, you're going to hear those at a set interval, even though the frequencies are doubling each time. Now, decibels are the same way. When I have a perceived loudness of twice as loud, I've gone 10 decibels each time. So the difference between 10 and 20 decibels will sound the same as 20 to 30 decibels, 
but the 10 to 20 decibels will be one tenth the amount of power as between 20 and 30. This means that every time that my ears hear that it gets twice as loud, I'm really multiplying the power by 10. That's why when we get up here to these very high decibels, we're just shaking the air. You can feel that power in your chest when a loud thunderclap happens and you boom, you feel it in your chest or when that jet takes off, you feel it vibrating you. That's because there is so much more power in that wave. There's, like I said, that's 10 trillion times more powerful than that. But your ears hear it on a logarithmic scale, so we're able to take in that wide range. Now, we don't hear all of these frequencies at the same sensitivity either. So, one dB of sound in 20 hertz, I won't be able to hear at all, but at four kilohertz, I'll be able to hear because my ears get most sensitive around the four kilohertz range and it rolls off on the low end and then it rolls off up at the high end as well. So we're most sensitive right here in this middle range. And that's important to remember when you're soundproofing because a lot of the designations like STC that you'll see on soundproofing material were developed back in the 60s when most of the sound that we are trying to get rid of fell right in the most sensitive area of human hearing. Now with home theaters, we're pushing the amount of power we're putting out into the atmosphere a lot higher down here where we're not able to hear as well and stuff like STC ratings don't even take those into consideration. So we'll get into that on future videos, but keep that in mind is we don't hear all frequencies equally. And because of that, we have to boost low frequencies, especially if we want to have that visceral experience in a home theater. To demonstrate our ear sensitivity changes, I am going to play the same tone at the same volume and you see how you react. If you're wearing headphones on this, make sure you're probably turned down because the 4K is going to just drill right in there. So I'm going to start with the most sensitive tone that most of us hear, and that's around that 4K range. All right, all right, you still there? Are you okay? Now I'm going to sweep up the frequencies and you're gonna feel it's gonna be loud right at the 4K and then it's gonna start alleviating as I go up and then sooner or later it's just gonna, it's gonna disappear and you're gonna be at the height that you can hear or YouTube might chop off some of the higher frequencies once we get outside of a range of normal speech and music just so that they can save bandwidth. So if that's what's happening, go to the link below with the tone generator and you can play with it yourself. So here, we're gonna sweep from 4K all the way up to 20K. All right, and now you can't hear anything at all. Now I'm gonna sweep from the top, I'm gonna to sweep back down to 20. Now, the speakers, if you're listening on your computer, the speakers aren't gonna put out 20 for sure. They're probably gonna get cut off maybe as high as like 120 or so. Um, but if you have headphones, you should be able to hear it down below that. If you have a really good sound system, maybe you can get it all the way down to 20. Again, if YouTube doesn't cut this off for bandwidth. So we're going to sweep from the top all the way back down through. It hurts. gets better. And then you can't hear it anymore, right? So again, if you have a good system, it's super fun to play around with it. Um, get your kids to see how high they can hear and start and stop it and they'll be able to tell you I can hear it now and I can't hear it now and you and I will be oblivious to it. So kids, if you want to take over the world, put all of your communications at like 18 kilohertz and above and the rest of us adults will have no idea what y'all are doing. So let's put this in the context of a home theater system build. So here I am and I am talking. Out of my mouth is coming vibration, sound pressure level, right? You got my voice vibrating. It's vibrating my microphone and this microphone has a has a element in it that's moving back and forth within a coil of wire. It's a magnet in a coil of wire that creates a voltage. Now this voltage is completely analogous, analogous and, and now it's the same as the vibrations that are coming out of my voice. We have now done it with voltage. High pressure is a positive voltage and the rare fraction, the low pressure side, is negative voltage. So we convert it to a voltage, then that voltage gets emitted digitally to my camera 
my camera then magically puts it on the internet and it poof and it goes over to you. I don't know how all that happens. It comes digitally into your your entertainment system, whether that's a laptop or let's say you're watching it on a home theater and you're watching it on a big screen. It comes out of your big screen and maybe you've got a, it's a home theater, so you've got a speaker system hooked up to it, right? Well, the high frequencies are going to come out of the tweeters and the mid-range here. And this is an ELAC speaker, it's coaxial, so my tweeter is actually sitting inside my mid-range. Super cool for phasing things. I digress. Um, and then the low frequencies are going to come out of the woofer here. And you hear all of that, those frequencies, the high frequencies especially, you hear them very linearly. They're going to travel in a straight path out of the speaker and emit in a very directional way. The low frequencies, because the wavelengths are longer, they're, going to, they're not going to go in just a straight path. They're going to emit just as much off the back side of the speaker as it is off the front side. In fact, this is a bass reflex speaker, so we actually want that proximity to the wall to help the wall amplify those low, those low frequencies. It makes this speaker much more effective at those low frequencies. But this is a home theater. We don't care about this measly six inch woofer here. It's not putting out near enough low end. We need some significant bass power. That's where this thing comes in here. This is a woofer. Now this doesn't start picking up until about 100, depending on where your crossover point is. Maybe you have it set at 100, maybe you have it set at 80. I usually keep mine very low because I just want it to fill in. I don't want it to be a speaker that I actually hear. I just want it to fill in from a musical standpoint. I want it to fill in some of those, those low ends. The problem with this is my ears don't hear 20 hertz, 80 hertz, down to 20 hertz very well at all. And that's what this speaker's putting out. So what do I do? I turn it up. I turn it up until I can feel it more than I can hear it. But remember, when I turn it up, I'm creating a lot more sound pressure level. We don't hear all of this equally. So now in order for me to be able to experience it, I have this little woofer just cranked up and it's creating so much power that when it hits my walls, it's going straight through it. You didn't have this problem back in 1961 when the STC system was developed. Subwoofers weren't invented until 1965. Patsy Cline had the number one hit in 1965 with I Fall to Pieces. Today in 2019, Billy Eyelash has the biggest hit with Bad Guy. If you put those on an audio spectrum analyzer, they look completely different. The bass on today's music is just all the way down to 20 hertz and is very bass heavy. Back in 1961, the turntables at the time, even if that music existed back then, the turntables at the time couldn't reproduce the kind of bass that we're producing now with our music. And don't get me started on movies. In 1972, I think it was, the movie Earthquake came out and Sirwin Vega unleashed their woofers at the front of the theater and in the back of the theater. And when the earthquake happened, those, those subwoofers went off and people felt their seats shaking and that just changed everybody's perceptions of what movie going could be like. And then through the decades, now we have these little guys sitting in our own home theaters just rocking out thunder sounds and we love it. But what about the neighbors? What about the kids in the other room? There introduces so many different problems. And that's what we are going to talk about in the future videos where we talk about STC versus OITC. We talk about transmission losses. We talk about decoupling and mass and absorption and damping. All of the good stuff on how to keep the sound from your home theater system in your home theater. It's not easy. It's not gonna be a quick little, hey, we're gonna add some insulation into the wall and we're gonna put some RLX foam pads on the wall and we'll all be done. That's not how it works. It's very detail oriented and you gotta get all the details right because sound as a wave has a property known as diffraction and it will go through a tiny little hole and re-emit on the other side like that wall wasn't even there. Again, topics for future videos. I hope you like this. I hope you learned something. I'm super excited about this series and where we're going with it. If you have any specific questions or topics that you want us to cover in the future, comment below, subscribe if we've earned it, go follow us over on all our social stuff and we'll see you next time.
on Smith House.